It's like anything, you want to sneak up on it because we can't put the material back. Welcome back to the JPM Performance Channel. Today, we're working on getting our ring gap set properly for this Miata engine. Uh, this is probably one of the most critical parts of assembling an engine properly because too tight of a ring gap, they can literally close up and you won't get any sealing and you will have extreme drag too loose and you can have a lot of blow by past the rings so you can lose a lot of effective compression. So this is a very, very important part of building an engine properly. So what we're going to go over today is kind of the way that I like to do it and which is actually the proper way of doing it. Um, what we have here is a four cylinder set of total seal rings. You have two oil control rails and a single second and a single top rail. Uh, some of the earlier pistons that we used to run would have a gapless second ring. A lot of times though, what we really ran into a lot of was having a hard time getting those rings to seal. We went over a lot of different uh, finishes in the bore, trying to figure out what was going on. And uh, eventually, now, we have a piston design that utilizes much thinner rings. And so they're too thin to run a gapless. And actually, the non-gapless set has been breaking in quicker and uh, obviously because they're thinner rings we're making a little bit more power and they seem to last a long time too so that's good so what i will use it depends on if you have a, a piston that has a flat top on it that you can literally use to push the rings into the bore evenly that's really the critical part here what you need is a set of feeler gauges and some sort of a ring grinder. Now, for years and years before I bought this really nice Total Seal um, ring grinder, I, was, I used this, which built a lot of engines with this. You clamp it in the vise, you can hand grind your rings. The disadvantages to this are it's much harder to keep your ring square. With the Total Seal ring grinder, you can adjust this knob to make sure that the ring is square to the stone where you're grinding it. So that's really a critical part of it. And also on the back side, there's this, it's kind of a rubber wheel, but it's how you can deburr your rings. So the first thing that we'll do is we will start, I like to start with the oil rings and kind of move my way up. I'm just going to do one bore so you guys don't get stuck watching this entire process. But you just kind of start the ring in the bore, take a piston, I shove it down to about the top of the wrist pin area, making sure that the piston is, is not cocked one way or another, this way or this way. And then you simply take your feeler gauge and you figure out what the gap is. Now on an oil control ring at this bore size, 15 thousandths is our minimum gap. You can run a control, oil control ring quite a bit larger than that because there's two of them plus the, I mean the scraper rings, the control ring goes in between the two scrapers. So you just simply slide it in there, 15 clears easily, 16, so 18 is snug. So that oil control ring is at 18, which is completely fine. It, the bigger issue would be that it would be too tight and that is where this would come into play so we'll check every single ring I'm just gonna do cylinder number one for you guys today that one's 18 as well so we're good on our oil control rings it's kind of what I expected um, this is an F production Miata engine 40 over bore 40, 40 thousandths oversized, so I do a lot of these engines, a lot of these pistons, a lot of these rings, so I kind of expected that. Now on our second ring, 
we're probably going to be a little under. But the procedure is the same. Just put it in a little ways and then push it down evenly. So I can't even push it all the way in because the two tabs have touched. So it's, it's way, way, way too small. So I have this already set for this bore size. So I know that it's going to be square and you can tell that it's square. Sometimes I'll take my light and confirm that it's square against the guide. And you just flip this on. Make sure that you're turned back away from the stone. Once you're done grinding it, you have these rough edges. So that is what this side is for. Just very lightly deburr the edges. And then what you can do to confirm that you're square, I'm going to get closer to see if you guys can see this. You can squeeze the ring together, making sure that they touch perfectly. You can see what a perfect gap that is. On this style, you have a tendency to maybe get a little off. So the problem with that would be if these two rings, if the ring ends aren't square with each other, then you're going to have a variable gap. You can have a much tighter gap on either the front or the back side, and that is not good for sealing. So we know that we have a really good square end gap. We've deburred it, so now we'll test it again. So on that first trial, I took off about 10 thousandths. Now I know we're going to have to go more than that, simply because I couldn't even push the ring into the bore. So now I can just push the ring into the bore. It's still very, very snug though. And I can see there's basically no gap. So right now we're at zero gap. If we attempted to run this engine that way, as soon as the engine warmed up, the ring would expand, the piston would expand, and this would dr drag into your bore, ruin your bore, probably ruin the piston, and uh, that's not good. So we're going to continue to grind here a little bit more. So we'll back this off again. So, on our gaps here, the ring manufacturer will give you their suggested ring gap. And it's going to be based upon the bore size. So you'll take your bore size and you'll multiply it by a certain figure. Generally, um, it's about 0 .0045 on the second ring and 0 .0055 on the top ring. The reason that you want your gap slightly larger on the top ring is so that you don't get any gases trapped between the top and second ring. If we had a smaller gap on the top and a larger gap in the second, the gases would actually get trapped between the two rings. And that's a bad thing because then it would just continue to travel down past the second ring into your oil rings and you would have much more blow by. So this is where we have to take our time and be very, very smart and sneak up on this. So what I'm going to be looking for here is right about 15 thousandths. And I know that just because I've built, you know, hundreds of these engines. So the 10 would not go in. We're sitting right about 9 right now. So we need to sneak up on this very carefully. This is where having a machine like this is really really a good thing because it's, it has a dial indicator here and once the ring contacts the stone 
I can measure a half a thousandth at a time. So we're going to be very careful and sneak up on this and try and get this ring right at about 15 thousandths. Ring gap. Okay, the 13 goes in a little snug, 14 will not go. We're getting close, very, very close. Two thousandths and we'll have it. So I can just barely get the 16 thousandths feeler gauge in there. So 15 goes easy, 16 almost goes. It's better to air slightly looser than tighter, of course, like we talked about. So that is going to be perfect for our number two ring. The other thing that you can see on some of these rings is little steps, especially in the second ring. There's a little step here, and that's the scraper and that helps to keep the oil off the bore. So that will face downwards. Now on the top ring, on these rings, there's a slight bevel on one edge here. That will face up. Why will that face up? As the combustion gases come down past the piston, on the outside of the piston, come down to this ring, if we have our bevel facing up, it will put a little bit of pressure in the, in the uh, groove and actually put a little pressure outwards on the ring, which helps it seal better. So make sure that you check your rings. If it's not a square ring on the top, if there's a bevel on the inside here, make sure that that faces up. So now we'll go to our top ring for cylinder number one, and we will see what we have here. So it's pretty much a zero gap. We'll see if I can get a one thou. No, can't even get a one thou feeler gauge in there. So this one's right at about zero right now. So we'll go through the same process. I like my top rings, my top ring gap to be about two thousandths larger than my second ring gap, two to three. This tends to work really well. The rings tend to break in really well and last much longer and create more power. So more power is what we're always looking for, right? So once again, I knew that I was at zero gap. So I went ahead and started with ten thousandths. Yep, and I can just get the ten thou gauge in there so we know that our gauge is working accurately. The stone is working well. There's 16, 17 almost goes. So 
So we know we're about one thou larger than our second ring gap right now. One thousandths of an inch doesn't sound like much, but I, I really try to be a perfectionist, especially when it comes to this. So we're going to take another thousandths off of this. almost goes so we're gonna call that 17 we were right about 15 to 15 and a half we're about 17 and a half on our top ring gap I'm gonna call that perfect so this is a really really important part of building a proper racing engine um, I know a lot of people think that maybe building engines is easy work but it's very meticulous and uh, doing things properly like this is part of what makes my engines, you know, last a long time, make good power, uh, prevent blow by, uh, really utilize all of the allowed tools that we have. You know, most of these engines are limited prep engines, so this motor is only allowed 10 to 1 compression. We can't really afford to be wasting our, our static compression and with blow bypass rings and valves and things of that nature. So very, very important part. Uh, kind of like being a surgeon, you have to make sure everything's done properly. When you put everything back inside, you hope it works together. So I'm not gonna bore you guys with showing you the rest of the bores. We're gonna do everything the way that we did cylinder number one. Um, another point to make here, and I'm a big fan of this stuff, uh, Total Seal has this stuff called Quick Seat. It's a dry assembly lube. Back in the old days, they would tell you to once you get your once you get your rings on your piston, there'd be guys that would oil the cylinders down. I've even seen guys dip whole pistons in buckets of oil before they, you know, put it in the bore. This dry dry assembly lube makes life so much easier. You have to make sure that your bore is really clean um, and I will use a combination of brake clean and a little bit of penetrating oil and uh, you basically just put this stuff on your fingers and rub it in the bores and make sure that they look nice and green across very evenly. Uh, this is pretty expensive stuff. I think this little bottle of this stuff was about a hundred dollars. It does last a while but this would be an important part of making sure that your total seal rings seal. So that's another important part of this. So that is our lesson for today. Grinding piston rings properly, making sure the edges are square, making sure our gaps are proper, and uh, very, very important. So now I'll go through, finish this up, and we'll get this bottom end going. Hope you guys enjoyed this video here on the JPM Performance Channel. Uh, make sure that you click on that bell in the corner and so you get post notifications when these new videos come up and please like share and subscribe to the videos I don't think you guys want to miss any of these we've got lots of good stuff coming up uh, hope you enjoyed it and we'll see you next time thank you